Welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, in today's tutorial, we're going to be explaining orbital habitats, uh, why uh, they should be used, uh, what purposes they serve, and just the general mechanics behind them. So, uh, just before we get into the video, uh, please remember to like, comment, and uh, subscribe as it really does help out. Being a normal YouTuber, pretty small, every little bit does actually help out, uh, and feedback is always welcome. Uh, and it also, this uh, tutorial was suggested by a user uh, who watched the videos um, called uh, Up Unkfester, my apologies, Unkfester. Um, and he suggested this exact one. Uh, and we have a few other suggestions as well. Feel free to go down into the description below and put in your suggestion for another tutorial. And you can also see what tutorials have already been done. So just go down there, suggest your tutorial, and I'll decide if I want to do that or not. Let's get right into the tutorial. So, have you ever had a planet that was one gravity over what you wanted, or was so hot that you, you could never colonize it, but there was something important about it? What if it's a gas giant, for example? But there was something important about it that you wanted, and you could only use by having people there. Let's say you have uh, an ancient construct, or a uh anomaly on the world and you want to find it you you want to use it you want to use research lab there or, or do something with that with population well lucky for you we have orbital habitats so um what you're going to want to do first off is to unlock the research for orbital habitats you need to go into um you need to go into i believe it is construction and production. Uh, you go orbital habitat module, uh, you research that, and then that will allow you to put the module on it. The orbital habitat module will allow uh, a craft or a station to have 200,000 capacity per module here. So I have this station here, or this orbital habitat, that has four of these modules. It can carry a total of 800,000 people. Now, this doesn't mean that it can carry people like cryogenic transport. It means that it can instead uh, habitate people when it's in orbit of a body. And there's a distinct difference that I'll get to in just a moment. So an orbital habitat, really all it is, is something with this module and no armor. So it's a station. So if we uh, oh, excuse me about that one. I need to uh, go into here. I think there's a little visual bug there. Uh, unlock the line. There we go. There's a little bit of a visual bug there for no armor. But there you go. So, space station for construction purposes. And this is relatively cheap if you think about it. 950 build points for 800,000 people total that can actually sustain that. Um, that isn't actually that bad. In terms of cost efficiency in comparison to infrastructure, if we have a look at infrastructure, each infrastructure costs two resources. So if you wanted to habitate someone there, let's say it was a colony cost two and you needed 2000 infrastructure, that's gonna be 4,000 BP for 10 million people. Okay, now for a million people, that'd be 200, so that'd be 400 BP. So you're spent, you're basically, when you are doing this, you're spending a little bit around four colony cost. That that that's how that's the kind of the conversion rate. So it's about double as expensive to use orbital habitats, but the difference the difference with the orbital habitats is you can build, put them anywhere. So now that we have the kind of idea of okay, this is the orbital habitat, we're now going to look at what you why would you have an orbital habitat? Well, if we come over here and we go over to uh, the second star where my home world is we can see that there is a planet called New Caprica. Now, New Caprica, it's actually a pretty nice planet. It's got a nice green oxygen atmosphere. It's, all of this stuff is great and, and could obviously be terraformed. The problem is, one, it's got too much pressure, so it's over the maximum pressure. And two, the gravity is uh, 0.2 Gs above where, or 0.1 G where, above where it needs to be. And because of that, it's uninhabitable except for orbital habitats. So, if I go over to here, I look at New Caprica, I have done this accordingly. So, I have a station in orbit, so I took the station over here in orbit, so this station, 
and I took that over to New Caprica, and this will add to the total population capacity. So this can now support 800,000 people. So that will support that many people accordingly. So even though it's got a high pressure atmosphere and it's not habitable, it's a desert, I can still support people there and you will also grow accordingly. And it will be treated like a colony like anything else. You can demand stuff, you can move stuff and all of that great stuff. And you can also have miners there. So just send some mines over here and then it's assumed that they will go down to mine it or they'll use orbital mining, quote unquote, from the habitat. Um, or they use specialized equipment or whatever. So they live in orbit and then they go down to, to the mines where they have like high pressure suits, for example. Now, the thing is, though, is you obviously won't have any agricultural environmental because, well, you're in an orbital habitat. But a lot of your workforce is going to be stuck doing manufacturing so you're not getting the most efficiency so even though i have eight hundred thousand people here i'm only getting about you know 25 percent of them are actually workers that i can use um so you know 23 uh thou or two hundred thirty thousand is all i have for my miners total that i can use you can also assign a governor and it works pretty much exactly like a normal colony uh, the only difference is, is that to add on to the capacity, you just need to add more orbital habitats to the world. And you also get, obviously, your annual work taxes and all this stuff. So that is basically all the orbital habitats are. They're a way for colonizing other worlds that can't be colonized or are really hard to be colonized. So if I wanted to put people to mine on Venus, I could do it accordingly. And there's also another thing you can do as well, is if you have let's say, uh, forced labor camps, which are really, really, really cheap uh, and efficient for what you want. So forced labor construction, forced labor mining. You can then, you can put those uh, on there and you can just put, let's say all your penal people or whatever, you can put them onto an old habitat on Venus or whatever and just like have the mine resources with forced labor camps, right? There's a lot of things that you can do with them, but the main thing is that the the TLDR is that most well, habitats are great for doing things that you want to do on planets that you cannot colonize with people. Uh, they're not as efficient as normal infrastructure. They are about twice as expensive uh, in terms of how many people you can fit on a planet and compared to infrastructure. And three is that you can minimax them accordingly and kind of situationally put them where you want to put. Um, they they can they can be extremely useful and they can be extremely beneficial in many circumstances. So that is essentially it. Just a quick tutorial there to kind of explain what orbital habitats are. How do you get colonists to go work in the mine? Showing them um, it, this works for research labs. It works for anything. So if I if if I if I go over here and I edit this um, and I say I want to add um, SM edit uh, add research lab so if i go there research lab i'm going to add two this will now mean that i have scientists who will now work on that and i obviously have a worker shortage there but this means that i can now research from this place there you go that simple but yeah that's pretty much it hope you have enjoyed the episode really quick one uh, more tutorials out uh, tomorrow will be episode three of the conventional starting steps remastered series i hope you will enjoy that one uh, and then the day after that it will be uh, the let's play series i'm kind of alternating every every other day we're going um tutorial conventional starting steps let's play uh, and the color code the code link so yeah anyway let me know what you think i'll see you next time please like comment and subscribe Bye bye